A World Without Jealousy. Published on June 18, 2013, by Carl Donk. Jealousy is one of the important causes of issues in our relationships, not only in romantic relationships, but also in friendly and business relationships. But where does it come from, and why are people like this? What causes people to feel envious towards others and begrudge them? Is it human nature? Are we really designed from the very core to envy each other instead of being supportive, wanting the best and feeling happy for one another? Or is jealousy something that we learn from our environment as we grow up? As it turns out, jealousy is not a problem that exists all by itself. In fact, it's a symptom of a bigger underlying root problem in society. Not too long ago, I wrote a post on what it really means to love someone where I mentioned the following. Quote, as far as true love is concerned, there's no room for jealousy. Jealousy can only exist in a society that is based on fear and scarcity, where people are being restricted, where abundance is suppressed, and where people become selfish and are taken over by greed in an effort to protect and retain the little bit of love that they are able to get from someone. End quote. When people have enough to satisfy their needs, and especially when they have more than enough, there's no need to feel jealous of others. It's only when they don't have enough to satisfy their needs that they start to envy others who have more. The root cause of jealousy in societies around the world is the way in which these societies are set up and structured around artificial scarcity. Very often it's the case that we could have been living in a society of abundance, but instead what we see is that abundance is being suppressed on purpose in order to create artificial scarcity. This is being done simply in order to more easily be able to control and manipulate people on a large scale. Remember what David Icke said. Quote, Scarcity equals dependency equals control. Abundance equals choice equals freedom. End quote. This kind of society was enforced on humankind thousands of years ago in order to enslave us. I won't go into details on this here, but if you'd like to know more, and I highly recommend you do, please check out Michael telling his book Slave Species of God, which has all the details on who enforced such a society on us and why. Today we're still struggling with the issues this kind of society creates in our lives. We could, for example, have been living in a society where there's an abundance of love if we just allowed everyone the freedom to love and to be loved as much as they like. It wouldn't cost us anything and we'd never run out of it. There would be so much love and affection going around in society that nobody would feel the need to own their partners and envy another person as they themselves would be getting more than enough. But instead what we see is that people are being socially conditioned from very early childhood to suppress giving and receiving love as much as possible. Society enforces all kinds of restrictions on people with regard to love, and in the end we're left with a society where it's very difficult for everyone to find love. Society conditions people to become greedy and start hoarding the little bit of love they can get, to fear what they have to lose, and to envy others who might be getting what they themselves can't get. Just think about it, how sick is it that people can actually get jealous when someone might be getting loved by someone else? Shouldn't we instead be happy whenever this is the case? What kind of a sick society creates people who can actually envy someone for getting loved? A popular argument people always come up with is that jealousy is just human nature, that it's a natural instinct, that it's just the way we are as a species, and that there's nothing we can do about it. And they often like to point at examples of other animals that also have the ability to become jealous. But even there the case can be made that animals get to behave this way when their environment conditions them to become jealous. Social engineer and futurist Jacques Fresco discusses such a case in the video below. This is what Fresco says around 14 minutes and 40 seconds in. Quote, and then I said, what about nature, like jealousy? Is that inborn? Is that an instinct? Or is it learned? So I talked to a psychologist about it. He said, no, it's a natural thing, jealousy. It's all over the world, in every animal. 
I said, give me an example. He said, well, if I reach for my cat, the dog growls. But particularly if I put it on my lap and stroke it. I said, is that what you mean by jealousy? He says, that's what I mean by jealousy. That's an operational definition. So I said, if it's instinctive I'm going to try to find out. I would feed the dog a little bit of fresh liver, and then reach for the cat. And keep feeding the dog fresh liver, and then after 10 or 15 times, when I reached for the cat, the dog's tail would wag. If it's inborn that wouldn't happen. The dog would still growl. I had to reject that. I began to talk to scientists. Mostly psychologists in the old days. And I said, why do you adjust people to this system? It's unsane. That's what they do. They have to be stupid to do that. Because psychologists are brought up with the routine of behavior, and they are given the statistics that are not always accurate. And so, I began to do a lot of work myself. End quote. This is a perfect example of what social conditioning can do to us. In this case, the dog and cat are socially conditioned to be very dependent on their master. Their environment is one of scarcity, there's only one master, and they must compete for his love and attention, and indeed depend on him for their very survival. So when it comes to their master, they live in fear of what they have to lose. When the dog sees his master spending time with the cat, he becomes jealous and protective of his master, afraid of potentially getting less, and maybe eventually even losing all of the attention from his master who he's dependent on. It's only when his master first reassures him that he'll continue to get enough attention, and in fact will even benefit from his master playing with the cat, that the dog stops being jealous of the cat. If the dog and cat had their freedom in nature, then not only would they have learned to be independent and survive on their own, but they'd be able to potentially rely on many more people for their survival. In such a case they wouldn't need their master, and wouldn't give a flying fuck about who he wants to stroke. People who own pets should honestly ask themselves if the love they supposedly get from their pet isn't just because they've made it dependent on them in an environment of artificial scarcity that they've created. The same thing can be said of young children who grow up with a single parent and often become very protective of that parent, afraid to even lose sight of them for a few minutes. Is it love? Or have they just been conditioned to be very dependent on their parent in an artificial scarcity environment? I say it's more of the latter. Even with two parents, children are conditioned from very early childhood to live in a scarcity environment. An environment where they are essentially loved only by their parents, and are dependent on them for everything. And parents use and abuse the scarcity environment to encourage dependency in order to control their children and enforce their values upon them. This is why Osho says that children should be the responsibility of the commune, where they can grow up in an environment of abundance. Instead of being dependent on one or two people for love, affection and care, they can grow up being able to receive love, affection and care from many people around them, enabling them to freely develop themselves into the person they want to be. Our whole society programs us into jealous people, and even religion contributes to this problem. When we let our children grow up while we teach them to worship jealous and vengeful gods, and poison their innocent minds with such nonsense, should we then be surprised when they later start behaving like those gods themselves and become jealous of others? Take the Christian God from the Old Testament, for example, who was very open about what kind of a God he really was. Quote, you shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, Exodus 20 verse 5. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Exodus 34 verse 14. End quote. Again, when you read Michael Tellinger's book Slave Species of God, you'll come to know exactly how this jealous God, or more accurately these jealous gods, enforced the scarcity society on humankind, and why exactly this was done. Instead of trying to adjust ourselves to this sick system, we need to replace it with something else. We need to stop sending couples to therapists 
and psychologists so that they can try to adjust themselves to this fundamentally flawed society. Like Jacques Fresco says, that is unsane. And yes, you have to be very stupid to try to adjust people to this sick society. Instead we need to expose this society for what it really is, a sick and perverted system of control, manipulation, and enslavement. We need to point out the root causes of the many problems we have in society, fundamentally understand them, and then start finding other ways of living together. And the only way we're really ever going to be able to effectively do this is by understanding our reality as a whole instead of fragmenting it and looking at issues in isolation. Like Michael Talbot said in his book The Holographic Universe, The Revolutionary Theory of Reality, quote, Indeed, Bohm believes that our almost universal tendency to fragment the world and ignore the dynamic interconnectedness of all things is responsible for many of our problems, not only in science, but in our lives and our society as well. For instance, we believe we can extract the valuable parts of the earth without affecting the whole. We believe it is possible to treat parts of our body and not be concerned with the whole. We believe we can deal with various problems in our society, such as crime, poverty, and drug addiction, without addressing the problems in our society as a whole, and so on. In his writings Bohm argues passionately that our current way of fragmenting the world into parts not only doesn't work, but may even lead to our extinction. End quote. In closing, jealousy isn't part of human nature, it's learned. It's a logical consequence of our society, which is designed around artificial scarcity. It's forced upon all of us from very early childhood as part of society's brainwash. Once you recognize this fact, you're one step closer to deprogramming yourself from it and becoming a saner human being. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.